Thanks again for joining me here at But Now Ministry. And today, as we continue to go through the importance of this series and this series titled, What Do You Anticipate Being Obstacles or Dangers That Would Imperil Your Ministry? And this would be part 17, 17 messages, because now we are getting into how to rightly divide the word of truth, which again, you'll probably never ever hear at your denominational, non denominational place. You'll never hear it at these celebrity Christians on the word. You'll never hear it from them on, on the radio. You'll never hear anybody talking about rightly dividing the word of truth. You'll never hear it. Harvest Translation Chapel never teaches it. Willow Creek never teaches it. Most of my denominational places in my area, and I live in Illinois, never teach it. And when they do teach it, because there are some mid-axe outfits out here in Illinois. When they do teach it, they'll say Jesus didn't know who he was. They'll tell you that kenosis theology is what you need to believe, that Jesus emptied himself. They'll tell you that you're grafted in. They'll tell you that Hebrews is written to us. And it's just a mess because they don't understand how to rightly divide. They don't understand the Pauline revelation of the mystery. And that's why it's important to start with Romans when you're saved, not John. Okay, John has nothing to do with the body of Christ. John is a minister of the circumcision, Galatians chapter 2, verse 9. So if they're giving you John when you got saved, that should tell you that it's time to leave this place. Because they don't understand their Bible. No one gets saved in John. No one gets saved in Matthew. No one gets saved in Mark. No one gets saved in Luke. It's future for Israel when they get saved. And that's what Christ is talking about in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. But because these people, they don't want to teach you the Bible. They want to teach you their agenda. They will never tell you that the first part of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John is the proclamation of the kingdom for Israel. They'll never tell you that that's the first quarter of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. The second quarter of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John is the presentation of the king. The third quarter of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John is the rejection of Israel's kingdom, not the body of Christ. Okay, The body of Christ is never mentioned in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. It was kept secret, Romans 16, 25. And then the latter part of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John the last quarter, if you might say, is the rejection of the king. Okay? Nothing to do with the body of Christ. Nothing to do with the Pauline epistles. Nothing to do about the Jew. No Jew or Greek. Okay? This is all about the Jew. Paul says there is no Jew. So, clearly, we're not there. Okay? But they're not going to teach you that. That's why you have to rightly divide the Lord's ministry to Israel, too. But we're not going to get into that today. What we are going to get into today is, which animals do we eat, right? There are all kinds of books. There's books on the Levitical diet. Rick Warren has a book called The Daniel Diet. And by the way, you ever wonder about the Daniel diet? Isn't that just an example of faith? It has nothing to do with food, with Daniel. Have you read it? Have you read the context of it? But he made a whole book on how we, how we should eat. According to Daniel? Talking about proof texting, allegorizing, storytelling, out of context, hocus pocus, right? Wow. That, it's just terrible. And that's from a guy, Rick Warren, who said, only preach the positive verses. So if I only preach the positive verses, according to Rick Warren, let me see who gave us the first positive verse in the Bible. Because Rick Warren says, you know, the purpose-driven church, the purpose-driven life. Rick Warren says, preach only the positive verses. So, Genesis chapter 3, verse 5. For God doth know that in the day ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened, and ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. So it was the devil that told Eve, to eat of the tree, and you'll be like God, right? Well, no. 
in your Bible it says you'll be lowercase g gods. But that was the first positive verse in the Bible. The first positive thing said in your Bible is that of the devil. So much for the power of positive thinking. You know what? It's the power of negative thinking that gets you saved. It's the power of negative thinking that makes you a Bible believer. Study all the positive people that are out there. Study them and tell me the road to destruction that they've led. Have you ever studied that out? All your so-called positive people... When it comes to the Bible, these positive people are sending people to hell. Is that positive? So, we're not going to get into the power of negative thinking, but which animals do we eat? Well, if we go back to Deuteronomy chapter 14, verse 4, 5, and 6, it says, and now we know Deuteronomy was written when? It was before Jesus' earthly ministry, right? It was written to the children of Israel, right? And Moses was the spokesman for God to Israel, right? Was Moses the spokesman to the body of Christ? Was Moses the spokesman in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John? Was Moses the spokesman from Hebrews to Revelation? No. Okay? But Moses was the spokesman in Deuteronomy. And so, when we take what Moses said to who was Moses, who did Moses always speak to? To the children of Israel, right? So clearly, this is not for us. Deuteronomy 14.4 4, There are the beasts which ye shall eat, the ox, the sheep, and the goat. Verse 5 The hart and the roebuck, and the fallow deer, and the wild goat, and the Pygarg and the wild ox and the Shamus. Or it could be the chamois, right? I have to eat the chamois. Deuteronomy 14.6 And every beast that parteth the hoof and cleaveth the cleft into two claws and cheweth the cud among the beasts that ye shall eat. Wait a minute. I want to wash my car with that chamois. I don't want to eat it. <laughs> That's what one pastor said. How about if we go to Paul's writings? Now, Moses clearly wrote to the children of Israel, and they told and Moses told the children of Israel that they can only eat those things that I just read, right? The ox, the sheep, the goat, the heart, the roebuck, the deer, the wild goat, the pie guard, the ox, the chamois. And every beast that parteth the hoof, that cleaveth the cleft into the two claws, that cheweth the cut among the beasts. That ye shall eat. But what does Paul say about that in the dispensation of God's grace, if you've heard of it, Ephesians chapter 3? Because if you have a new translation, you have not heard of the dispensation of God's grace. I'm sorry, it's been in your Bible 400 plus years. You need to hear of it. Titus, 1 Timothy chapter 4, 1 and 2. And 3 and 4. Now the Spirit speaketh expressly that in latter times some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils, speaking lies and hypocrisy, having their conscience seared with a hot iron, forbidding to marry, and commanding to abstain from meats. Now wait a minute. Everything Moses said there is meat, isn't it? Ox, sheep, goat. I don't see any vegetables in what Moses told Israel to eat, do you? And here Paul says that it's doctrines of devils if you abstain from meats. Aren't there some denominations that tell you to abstain from meats? Aren't there some cults that tell you to abstain from meats? And they do a big fasting or they do Lent? Well, Paul says that's a doctrine of devils. Why? which God hath created to be received with thanksgiving of them which believe and know the truth. So do you believe and know the truth? Have you come unto the knowledge of the truth? That would be Paul's writings, right? So again, 
vegan and all those special diets, religions that tell you not to eat meat, Lent, and cults that tell you to fast, that would be against the Bible. That would be against the dispensation of God's grace according to the revelation of the mystery, Romans 16.25 and 1 Timothy 4.4 4, For every creature of God is good and nothing to be refused. Nothing to be refused if it be received with thanksgiving. And again, if you're having a hard time with these verses, it's a faith issue. It's a study issue. How do you grow in grace? Colossians chapter 1, verse 9 and 10. Grow in knowledge, wisdom, and spiritual understanding. 2 Timothy 2.15. Show yourself approved unto God. Studying. Right? Study to show yourself approved. That's why you're having a hard time with this. You haven't studied. You haven't rightly divided. You think everything in the Bible's for you. Just like Rick Warren, right? Just like Bill Hybels. Just like Joyce Meyer. Just like James McDonald. Just like T.D. Yakes. If those guys are saved, they're going to get wood, hay, and stubble at the judgment seat of Christ. I don't think any of those guys are saved, though. They do not understand the gospel of clarity. They mix it all together. I was at Harvest for eight years. They would tell us that Christ died for our sins, and then they would pass around the tithing plate. They would tell us that Christ died for our sins, and they would tell us to go up front. They would tell us to read the book of John. They would tell us to fill out a sin card. Those are all works. Those are righteous works. Those are law works. That makes the cross of Christ of none effect. That's what the Bible says. That's not what I say. That's what the Bible says. Romans 11, 6, And if by grace, then it is no more of works. Otherwise, grace is no more grace. But if it be of works, then it is no more grace. Otherwise, work is no more work. And you're talking about almost 70 years ago. Well, give or take. I, I don't know the exact time. And I apologize, but I don't have the exact time when Lewis Sperry Schaefer was the first president of Dallas Theological Seminary, which was a dispensational seminary, which he was president over 20 years there. He said, Grace cannot have any recognition of human guilt, any recognition of human obligation, and any recognition of human merit. C.I. Schofield said in his notes on the bottom of Ephesians that Paul's writings are the doctrine for the church, the body of Christ. The doctrine, the destiny, our marching orders. And he wrote that a hundred years ago. But, but because people don't study, because people don't care about the people that came before us that actually taught the Word of God that the, the best that they can according to what they believe, not according to what the scholars told them, not according to what the commentators told them. They may have gotten a few things wrong, but we can stand on their shoulders. And we can keep driving forth the truth that was right. Okay? If you think Rick Warren is right by, taking, by only preaching positive verses when the first positive verse ever said was by the devil, then you don't understand your Bible. As a matter of fact, you're probably not saved. And so, you need to get these things right. Otherwise, you're going to be putting out a book called The Daniel Diet, according to Leviticus. According to Leviticus. <laughs> Should we judge? The next important question in rightly dividing the word of truth. Should we judge? Aren't we supposed to turn the other cheek? Isn't that what Jesus said? Aren't we supposed to follow Jesus? Like Sidney Sheldon said, right? What would Jesus do? You know what Jesus would do today? He would tell you to follow the Apostle Paul because that's what his Bible says to do. The Lord Jesus Christ gave ministries to people. He gave, when, he was Je when he's Jehovah God, he gave it to Moses. When he is in his earthly ministry, he gave it to Peter, James, and John. When he 
left and became the Holy Ghost and then Israel rejected him, he gave a new message that no one knew about, about the body of Christ to the Apostle Paul. That message has everything to do with you studying and being an ambassador and a minister of reconciliation. It has nothing to do with Holy Ghost power. It has nothing to do with the Lord Jesus Christ and his flesh. And it has nothing to do with, the, with Jehovah God. But we can learn about Jehovah God in the Old Testament. We can learn about Jesus, God in, manifest in the flesh in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. And his character and how he ministered to Israel. And we can learn about a lot about God. And we can learn a lot about his ministry with the Holy Ghost to Israel in the first year of their tribulation in Acts chapter 1, verse, Acts chapters 1 through 8. But God is not functioning the way he did with Old Testament Israel, the way he did in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, and the way he did with New Testament Israel in Acts chapters 1 through 8. He is functioning according to the body of Christ. And if he is not, then Romans chapter 3 verse 4, then God's a liar and all these guys that are building kingdoms today are telling the truth. Sorry, the only thing that's going on today is the body of Christ. God's not blessing anybody with good. God's not blessing anybody with evil. Okay? That's all law of covenant thinking. That's not in place today. That's fallen. Israel's fallen. Israel was only given the law and the covenants. They're fallen. Um, you'll find that in Exodus 19, Jeremiah 31, Ezekiel 36, and Hebrews chapter 8. The law and the covenant is only given to Israel and the house of Judah. The body of Christ was always strangers to the law and covenant. And when you go to Romans chapters 9, 10, and 11, when Paul is addressing Israel and confirming what he's addressing with the Old Testament, don't think that's for the body of Christ because it's not. You're not rightly dividing the word of truth. Romans 9, 10, and 11, Paul never mentions once the church which is his body because he's addressing Israel. We're a new creature. We have peace with God. We're not going to lose our salvation. We're sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. We're sealed till the day of redemption. We're saved from the wrath to come. If you think you're the grafted in in Romans 9, 10, and 11, then Hebrews is for you. You can lose your salvation. That goes against all of Paul's writings. We're a new creature. We're in the body of Christ. There's no Jew or Greek in the body of Christ. There's no male or female in the body of Christ. God sees us in Christ. We are hid in Christ. We're not trees. We're not grafted in. We're not the root and fatness. We're not the wild olive branch. Paul never gives reference to the body of Christ as being a tree, a root. That's always reference to Israel. Study it out. Study out the vineyard. Study out the tree. Study out the branch according to the prophetic program and you'll get it right. Then, study out the new creature, study out the body of Christ, and see if Moses ever talks about that, see if Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John ever talk about that, and see if it's found from Hebrews to Revelation. That you're a new creature, that you're sealed, that you're all, you have all spiritual blessings in heavenly places, not physical, that you are made... Peace with God, Romans 5, 1. That you're in the beloved. And so, 
You're accepted in the beloved, Ephesians 1, 6. You're seated in heavenly places. Ephesians 1, 13, Ephesians 1, 3. You have peace with God, Romans 5, 1. He's not counting one sin against you. 1 Corinthians chapter 5, 16 through 21, Romans 4, verses 5. There's no Jew or Gentile today, Colossians chapter 3, verse 11, Galatians 3, 28. Our old man is dead, Romans 6, verses 11 through 12, Galatians 3, 20. Christ is our head, not our king. Colossians 2 9. Christ is seated. He's not standing anymore. Ephesians 1 3. We are not under the law, but under grace. Romans 6 14. So if you go to Moses' writings and you go from Romans 9, 10, and 11 to Moses' writings, that's all law covenant. And then you put the body of Christ in there? Wow. You're, you don't know how to rightly divide the word of truth. There are more than 30 mentions of Israel from Romans 9 to Romans chapter 11. It's all about Israel. And Moses, yes, wrote all about Israel. He spoke only to the children of Israel. So, I'm sorry, I went off on a tangent. But again, Matthew and Jesus' earthly ministry is only to the circumcision, only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. And so, should we judge? Matthew 7, 1 and 7, 2. Jesus addressing Israel, the lost sheep as a matter of fact, Matthew chapter 15 and Matthew chapter 10, Jesus only sent his disciples to the lost sheep and Matthew 15 himself. And John chapter 1 said he came for his own. And Romans 15, 8 says he's a minister of the circumcision. So if you think he's talking to you, then you're just confused and lost. I'm sorry. You need to get these things straightened out. Matthew 7, 1 and 7, 2. And by the way, this is way before Paul saved. This is way before the revelation of the mystery. This is even before the rejection of the Holy Ghost in Acts chapters 1 through 8. Okay? This is before James writes about the 12 tribes scattered. Okay, which happens, by the way, James is written before the Apostle Paul is saved. Judge not that ye be not judged. For with what judgment ye judge, ye shall be judged. And with what measure ye meet, it shall be measured to you again. Wow. Wow. Those are pretty stern words. For who? For Israel. Under what? A law and covenant. Why would he tell them to do that? Maybe so they can get through the tribulation and inherit the kingdom and be saved? Because no one's saved in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Have you ever noticed that? Salvation is only of the Jews in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. What? That's right. But what does Paul say? According to the revelation of the mystery, according to the but now, according to what's going on today, right? One pastor said, the church of what's happening now, which is the body of Christ, right? Second, or 1 Corinthians 2.15, but he that is spiritual judgeth all things, yet he himself is judged of no man. Judge all things? Yeah, we are to judge all things according to what? The revelation of the mystery, according to sound doctrine, right? Are you doing that, elder? Are you doing that, deacon? If you're not doing that, then you're letting all kinds of baggage in your so-called church. And you do not know how to address it on a doctrinal level. Instead, you're singing kumbaya. I know you are. Because I was there. I was in that so-called place called Harvest Translation Chapel. It's a spiritual blender that sings kumbaya with people that are on their way to hell because they have no doctrinal understanding in their soul. And it's sad. Thanks again for listening as we continue to trek through how to rightly divide God's perfectly preserved word, our 1769 King James Bible. My hope is that you will see the fellowship of 
the mystery. Ephesians chapter 3, verse 9. Thanks again for listening, and don't forget to check out my website at preachingthegospelatsaves.com and subscribe to my channel. Thanks again. I want to make a side note here on which animals do we eat. Again, when we look back at Deuteronomy, and that is clearly doctrine for Israel in the Old Testament under the, their law and covenant. Again, the body of Christ never is under the law and covenant. And so when we're looking at the requirements for Israel under the law and covenant of the things that they could only eat and the things that they could not eat, Paul makes it very clear today in the dispensation of God's grace, if, t if people are telling you to eat specific things, whether it be just meat or just carbs or just vegetables, that's a doctrine of devils. Because Paul says in 1 Timothy 4.4, 4, For every creature of God is good and nothing to be refused if it be received with thanksgiving. So again, so much for the special diets. So much for the Atkins diet. So much for the carb diet. So much for the vegan diet. So much for fasting. Okay? Paul shuts it all down according to the revelation of the mystery, according to the body of Christ. For every creature of God is good and nothing to be refused if it be received with thanksgiving. Just wanted to add that to what animals do we eat. Thanks.